The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon. In uh, reading our Gospel today, um, I could almost see Jesus um, with, a, um, with a little board like this. And he's saying, this is our strategy, okay? Um, it's going to be like this. One, you know, you're going to bring no food, no sack, no money in your belts. Number two, um, okay, guys, game time. I, he's like a coach. <laughs> I, was, I, I could imagine and picture him like, okay, you can do this. Two by two, okay? You go two by two, and this is what you do. One, two, three, four, five. And so they went and did exactly as he was told. And the apostles, of course, would later on come to make a report to him in the succeeding version of this gospel. So um, the, the, the instructions are clear. In fact, uh, if, if we think about it, we Christians are instructed very, very clearly. Clearly enough that we know what is right from what is wrong. Clearly enough that we can find our way to discover um, what it is that the, the Lord is asking from us, in the, especially in the moral life, especially when we are caught in decisions where it seems like there are gray areas. It's easy. We can discern it. We can make a discernment. And we know the fundamental truths. And we know what is good and what is bad. It is written in our souls. When we educate our conscience, we know what's there and we can follow it. I think just like Jesus is instructing his apostles here, his disciples, apostles, sorry, um, he, the God, has given us a clear instruction for um, our, our journey in this world to get to where he is, to get to the heavenly inheritance. Um, and I, it's very important, I think, that we derive some of our very own lessons about, uh, about our own walk of faith, our own walk in the Spirit, just from some of the details of this particular gospel. We can get some good points today on our spiritual life, and our Christian living from the, the points mentioned in this gospel. One thing that stands for me is that we have to do this two by two. In other words, nobody should be doing things on their own. Why? Actually, when you look at some of the stories in the scriptures, you will find that um, the devil works in separations. Remember how... Um, um, St. Peter would call Jesus. After Jesus made an announcement about his death, right? He said, the Son of Man is going to die, suffer, and be handed over to the elders of the people. And then, what did Peter do? Come here, God forbid that will happen to you, Lord. Uh, you, can picture, you can picture Peter taking him aside and saying this. It's not going to happen. Look at Jesus when he was, when he was tempted in the, in the, in the, in the desert. He was alone, right? There's something about the whole idea of strength found in supporting one another, in working with one another, in being with one another. It tells us that the Christian ideal, that the Christian ideal is working with one another, is working with, hand in hand, not 
working on your own, not going on your own, doing your own dance. It's dancing with. It's harmoniously participating in the action of grace. So uh, it's good to be able to name your teammate. <laughs> Who are your teammates, church? Who are the people that the Lord has given you to work with in your spiritual journey? And I think for the most part, in, in, in a, just in the way the universe works or the, the, the li our lives work, I can immediately say that in, in, my, in the stories of so many people over the past 17 years of my priesthood, I find that couples, husbands and wives, are given by God to each other to be allies. And so if your ally is here, press that ally's hand. I see they did. Good. <laughs> Thank the Lord for the gift of the ally. And if you are the, and now you know that you are an ally, look after the welfare of the other person to make sure that the other person is growing in the spirit, is growing in the spirit of the Lord. The priest, they used to say that the priest and the associate pastor are supposed to be working hand in hand. Well, I'm solo here at Mary Queen. So um, who's my uh, partner? My breviary, my partner are my plants. <laughs> um, but actually, I, I am really very much affirmed and very much supported by my support group. We, I have a support group of three other priests, uh, Father Mario Quejada, some, some of you know, Father Dindo Biliote, another Filipino priest uh, who is the pastor in, at St. Mary's in Mokina. Father, Father Mario is a fa pastor at... Uh, uh, Roselle at St. Walter's in Roselle, and my other brother brother support group is Father Mark Cody, who was my classmate in the seminary, and uh, is now the pastor of St. Paul down in Joliet, um, and he was the former pastor at St. Alexander's in Villa Park, for those of you that know. So these are my, these are the people that I journey with, I work, walk hand in hand with. These are the people that kind of guide me, tell me, remind me, sometimes correct me, sometimes inspire me. <laughs> so this is, this, those, are my, those are my two by two, and we're four. So um, it's a good thing to have a support system. It's a good thing to, to know your support system and to nourish, nurture, grow, and develop right? that support system that the Lord is providing you. None should be left alone. That's the way the Spirit works. Number two, I think it is very important to realize that the reason why uh, in the journey, um, you bring us a walking stick. Uh, it's, it's because it is good to walk well. It's good to know that you have a, an extra support. You have an extra protection. The walking stick is a very helpful protection, especially depend, during this time, especially in peril. That little stick can become your defense. It is very important that when we are going through the walk of our spiritual life, that we know how to make the defense. The defense is the best offense. I actually just did a, um, a dose of holy that's, that I posted on my YouTube that says, defense is the best offense. So um, yes, that, that the walking stick is very important. It is your defense um, against snakes, you know, or if you lost your way, you have somebody, something to hold on to like this. Um, it's, it's helpful for carrying. You know, if you need to carry something, you hook it on your stick. There are many things that you can do with a stick. So um, it's very good to have something to defend you along the way. Um, so, yes, and if, if anything at all, somebody that can shoot the dogs in the neighborhood, if they'll have to come to you and bite you. <laughs> okay. So, but at the same time, um, Jesus is also asking, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. What? Where are they going? <laughs> this is not a field trip for sure. No sack, no food, no money in their belts. Is this realistic? I mean, if you're sending these guys on a mission, shouldn't they be worrying about food, sack, money? How are they going to survive? And I think in the spiritual life, this is very, very important. If we know 
that we are doing God's will. Okay, I'll repeat that. If we know that we're doing God's will, we don't ever have to worry about food, sack, money. This is true in the spiritual life. We live in a culture where we have to be insured. <laughs> we got a lot of insurances. Oh, I need to do this so that if rainy day comes, you know, that's fine, you know. But in the spiritual life, sometimes these things become a burden to us. The food, the sack, the money, um, those are stuff that we can't carry with us, especially when we are on long journeys, on foot, right? Those weigh us down. The food, the money, the, those worries that we have over material things to sustain us, they can be our burden that will prevent us from doing our mission. But if we really truly believe in our mission, and if we really truly believe that we're doing the will of God, these things will be provided for us. I am a witness to God's providence when you're doing His will. Um, I come from poverty. My family comes from poverty. Uh, we, there was a time in our lives when we were very comfortable in life, and then suddenly my parents separated, and then we experienced the hardships. Um, but we, my mother particularly, knew that one, if there was one thing we needed to do, we, we needed to be in church. We needed to pray. We needed to be with God. We needed to stay focused in being with the Lord and serving the church. And so that's how we spent our poverty. And guess what? Even in the midst of our poverty, we were giving away food to our neighbors. In the midst of our poverty, we never had to skip a meal. In the midst of our poverty, all the three children eventually graduated from college. Just with my mom, using her own little handiwork. That is how God, good God is. I am a testament to His providence. If you, if you follow the, if you seek God's kingdom, everything else will follow. And I think this is what this means. When you don't, when you don't have those insurances, when you are being told not to worry about what you're going to eat, what money you have, um, not, not to worry about all that stuff, security, it is because there's one and only one thing you have to trust, God's providence. And if we're going to do this in the spiritual life, you have to trust, we have to trust, insist on trusting God's providence. This is what Christianity is all about. And finally, we need to be aware to do what we're supposed to be called for. There are three things here in this gospel that we were asked to do. First of all, make a proclamation. Enter the house and uh, make a proclamation of, the, of the, the witness and testimony of God. So in the spiritual life, we're supposed to be sharing all the time. We're supposed to be witnessing all the time. We're supposed to be taking every opportunity we have to spread good news, to spread the gospel, to talk about God from our homes to our neighbors to our larger community to the world. That is part of our, our handiwork. And you know, if you ever feel unworthy or you think that you are not good enough for this, look at Amos. <laughs> he was a prophet. He was called as a prophet in the first reading today, right? But what, what was, who was Amos? What did he do in his life? What was his livelihood? He wasn't really a speaker, right? He wasn't really a speaker. What does our, what, what does our first reading say today? That Amos was simply a dresser of sycamores. He was a shepherd and dresser of sycamores. And he was called by God to be a prophet. Connect? <laughs> well, none. <laughs> it's just that God called him and he became a prophet. Think about it this way. Abraham. Abraham was not the smartest person in the universe. He was considered cursed because he had no children. God called him. Right? Um, Isaac. Isaac stole his brother's birthright. He was a, uh, he double crossed his brother. That's the one that's invited. Right? Um, further on, David the king. David was no more than a tiny little shepherd. He became a king. Moses. Moses was a fugitive. He, uh, he was called out, out of running away from a murder that he did. Think about the people that Jesus called in the New Testament. Matthew, the tax collector, 
the sinner. Think about every single one of them. There were no professional whatever there in the, in the, in the line of the people that they called. People called the simple. People called, Jesus called the, the ones who had no wonderful resume to present. To tell us that first of all, if God calls and invites, the best thing we could do is to answer. And when we do, when we proclaim, we proclaim good news and preach repentance, drive out demons, and heal the sick. The moment we answer, the moment we answer the call of God, the moment we respond to His, to his invitation to be in His team, and He tells you to do what you have to do, the power that He has will be with you. You will preach repentance, and people will repent. You will drive out demons, and the demons will run away. You will anoint the, the oil of someone. You will lay your hand upon the sick, and the sick will be cured. This is the promise. This is the church. We preach. We, we expel demons. And we heal the sick. And so, yes, together we are called by the Lord today to walk in the spirit that he has invited us to be part of, Two by two, never left alone. All we have to do is say yes.